Hey, it's Mike here, and today, avocados aren't vegan now? I'm gonna do a quick response to a massive slew of articles claiming that vegans shouldn't eat avocados because it harms bees. Maybe you saw this Washington Post article, sorry vegans, if you don't eat honey, avocados might be off limits too. Really another article that starts with sorry vegans, maybe someday we can get a thank you vegans. Anyway, so what's the origin of this media onslaught? One could call it the avocado onslaught of October 2018. Well, it appears to be BBC game show host Sandy Toxvig's game show because the BBC is so crazy about copyright and last time I used their clips, I couldn't even go live with my video. I'm gonna thoroughly remix this clip. Which of these can you eat if you are a strict vegan? Uh, Any of them, uh, right? Uh, 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 was one of them made out of animals? Animals? Uh, no, it's migratory beekeeping, and it's an unnatural use of animals, and there are lots of foods that fall foul of this. Broccoli is a good example, uh, cherries, cucumbers, lettuce. So, bad news for millennials, I'm afraid. Avocado toast is usually not vegan. In a bit, I'll cover why that blanket statement is not correct, but first, let's see if there is any truth to this. Why might this be the case? Well, it all comes down to pollination. We're talking about plants that are normally pollinated by local insect populations, but because we're growing them on such a large scale at such high density monocultures that local populations can't keep up, because of this, the bees have to go on tour. And no, not like the beetles, those insects had it good. <laughs> yeah. From that Washington Post article, this is also the method for apples, plums, cherries, alfalfa, blueberries, watermelon, cantaloupe, cucumbers, pumpkin, lettuces, squash, and tangerines. But almonds probably take the cake here, requiring half of the US's bee population to pollinate the California almonds. From almondsarenotvegan.com, yes it exists, quote, bees are fed high fructose corn syrup to combat fatigue and ensure the hives can perform their orchard duties. Researchers are still undecided as to how harmful this is to the bees. Further, the annual communion of bees has led to the spread of bee diseases and parasites across the country. The site even refers to it as slave labor and ends with quote, if you feel it is okay to eat almonds, you are not vegan. My thoughts on that in a second, but back to avocados from Be Aware, a Australian bee site, quote, in Central America, the avocado is pollinated by social bees and wasps. In other regions of the world, honeybees are the main pollinators. So California appears to generally use shipped in bees, but wait a minute, wasps do something good? I thought they were just Satan's minions. I'm kind of like a bee, but I'm angry. So this brings us to the question, how much are these bees suffering? Well, it appears the main issue is that when they're getting shipped across country, they're so hygienic that they don't wanna poop in the hive and they hold it in and some of them can die that way. And the other issue can be that they end up spraying pesticides before the bees are removed, though this is just a horrible business practice and doesn't appear to be standard. Now back to Sandy who says, because these plant foods involve bees that they're not vegan. Firstly, I do not consider this on par with intentionally directly taking bee food away from the bees. However, it's very likely that these bee shipping companies are taking the honey away at the end. Secondly, and this speaks to the slave labor point by almondsarenotvegan.com, this is just what bees naturally do. They naturally go and pollinate things. They collect nectar. That's very different than forcing them to do something. In that sense, you'd have to say that every worm under the soil is also doing slave labor to help grow food. And in the case of a lot of those plants, a good portion of them aren't even pollinated this way, they're just naturally pollinated. For example, in Iowa, I've worked at an organic farm when I was younger, and we grew zucchini in a lot of these, cantaloupe, and we never did that, so it's not everywhere. What we're really talking about here is the edges of veganism, those gray areas that vegans need to make a decision on. And unfortunately, if you look hard enough, you can pretty much find some level of animal exploitation or suffering in every supply chain of basically every product that exists. Plants can be grown with blood meal or fish meal fertilizer or use factory farmed manure and combines can kill rodents. In fact, you could go as far to say that any industry that uses meat-eating workers is actually fueling their production of their product with animal flesh. That's part of the supply chain, just like bees are part of the avocado supply chain, but it would be pretty crazy to worry about every single industry that has people eating meat working in it. And this is where it can get a little OCD, and that's why I definitely subscribe to the Vegan Society's definition of veganism, which essentially is about reducing animal suffering and harm as much as is practically possible, as much as is achievable. 
And the biggest difference here between vegans and others is that they don't have the intention of harming animals while buying their food products. While other people consciously know that they are eating a dead animal, they're paying people to kill that animal and so forth. However, I also don't think it's good to use the vegan society definition of veganism to just ignore any possible harm that can be done. For example, there are situations where the animal death toll is very high for plant products, and one, I would say, depending on how it is grown, is palm oil. If palm oil is not sustainably sourced, there is a reasonable chance that it is from cleared rainforest in which orangutans were likely killed or harmed. Yes, I am a horrible species, this person who is a sucker for orangutans. And one other point, and I would say this is a sensitive description, so if you have children, muffle their ears in three, two, one. Orangutans displaced from the palm oil industry have been used in sex trafficking, which is totally messed up. Okay, sensitive description over. Humans, you did it again. You're, you're actually the worst. This is why vegans get crap for hating on humans. As you probably know, I stay away from oil anyway, so it's really easy for me to dodge this. And now we're getting more and more labels for sustainable palm oil because people know it's such an issue, so it's getting easier. But back to these pollinated plants, the reality is that avoiding that vestige of potential animal suffering would just be maddening as a vegan going into a grocery store and just crossing off all of those foods from the list would just be a little bit too much. I do, however, think that the next stage of vegan activism, you know, once we've made enough headway on people literally eating animal flesh and repetitively, forcibly impregnating cows, then we can start working on the supply chain of plants and reducing the animal suffering in that, really focus on that at least. There are things like veganic farming that I've done a whole video on and just other ideas in general, like companion planting, because the issue here is that they have a monoculture where there's only nectar from flowers available at a single point in the year, but they could be planting a lot of these even vegetables and trees together and having a sort of sequential source of food for these bees so they could uphold a local population that could do the job. And this is sort of a freaky and unnatural thought, but because trees like avocados can be pollinated by hand, I wouldn't be surprised if down the line people are gonna start using like mini drones that do it. Finally, I wanna talk a little bit about why I think this article was shared so widely, why that woman even made that question on her game show in the first place. Something tells me it's not that people are actually concerned with vegan morals, it's that they can go, ha, stupid vegans are so ethical and puritanical that they can't even have their avocado toast now, and therefore I can feel a lot better about eating a lot of meat on purpose. This is very much a two quo quo fallacy, that eye for an eye fallacy. Since you did something bad, I can feel good doing something bad too. And it's often paired with a straw man in this case, a straw ban of a non-vegan saying what vegan foods are, which is a ridiculous thing unto itself. In this case though, it's really an avocado for an avocado. And the whole thing just adds to the idea that vegans are so illogical and crazy and out there that you should just never even consider being vegan. Bad news for millennials, I'm afraid. So in the end, while we can probably find some animal suffering everywhere we look, vegans are massively, amazingly reducing the amount of animal suffering that we contribute to as a human species. But for the same reason that we keep walking, even though we might step on a bug or we keep breathing, even though we might inhale a bug, you have to draw the line somewhere. You have to remain sane. That being said, this is sort of the 101st reason to support local small scale farming. There's a lot of reasons that monocultures are bad for the environment, they use a lot of chemicals and so forth. So if you have the choice right in front of you, it's obvious and it's easy and you can afford to do it, then why not choose the plants that weren't grown with shipped bees? So so to conclude, I think as a vegan, it's good to acknowledge that you're gonna do some harm at some point, but also that you're doing a heck of a lot less and that you're doing way better than you otherwise would be. All right, that's it for today. Let me know down below, should, should vegans surrender their avocado toast? All right, feel free to like and subscribe and see you next time.